Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Boatworks that's finally going to be ending soon, hopefully. Today we'll be installing the pedals and finishing off the windlass. I've got a secret ingredient to get me through today. Here it is here. So we've been trying out this mud water. You all know I love my cup of coffee, probably love too many cups. So I found a new morning ritual that involves a really tiny amount of caffeine, but a whole heap more goodness to go with it. And this is the mud water. I've been banging these down for the last couple of weeks and I'm feeling so much better. By the afternoon I'm not crashing. I haven't done any night passages yet. And that's where I'm generally will scoff down so many coffees and by the end of it I'm just wrecked in a jittery sleepless mess. But now I'm going to give that a go in the next couple of weeks too as we head south down to Mexico. If you're thinking you can't kick the habit of uh, coffee and caffeine and the side effects of it, you can because I am the proper living coffee addict or should I say was the coffee addict and uh, I've replaced it with a healthier more beneficial choice. Now I wake up and I just buzz all day long and I don't get the crash, I have a good night's sleep and I'm not jittery. It's a bloody win-win guys so if you want to try something pretty cool give it a go. For now let's hit the boat work. So what I am doing here is I am taking the old button that pulls the anchor chain up. I am taking it off because we're replacing it with a new one and as you can see the silicon is quite old and was making it leak and water getting in the boat is not good. So we've got to clean that, take it off. I'll leave the rest up to dad. Up here we've got a solenoid which only allows us to raise the anchor. We're putting a dual two-way solenoid here so the motor's two-way, so we'll be able to lower the anchor and raise the anchor with these new little buttons. Thanks to everyone from the Amazon wish list from these fittings here. Uh, we're replacing our old, well, old fitting with some nice new ones. We're going to have an up and down instead of just a up. It's a lot safer for the family just to push buttons than it is to try and lever around the chain. Uh, also, we've got a deck wash to mount up there, so everyone has contributed to our buttons, our deck wash, our fittings, whatever part it is, we really appreciate it. We're going to keep going here and we'll show you in a little bit. We should have an up and down windlass. Well, it looks like there's remains of... Remains of a, a screw that someone just left in there. They've been holding the other one up, causing it to leak. Who knows? That's what our new ones are going to look like. Bill, he lent us uh, his whole saw so we could do this job. This little section here has been fixed in the past. There was actually a core put in, a bit of plywood that's been put in replace of what was rotted. Uh, they've done a proper job, but you can see that's the that's the deck, and that's the core they actually added from underneath. Anyway, you get that old boats. Quite thick the deck. Well, you know I love my masking tape. And you know why? Because I just peel it off when I'm done and the job's clean. I'm using 4000, so I'll turn that around. It's 3M 4000. Uh, you can use 5200, but anything you bet with that stuff doesn't generally want to come up. Not that I want to pull these up, but if ever I needed to service them, because the contacts need servicing every blue moon, um, 5200 makes it hard, so 42 or 4000. Yeah, it's a little bit easier. Oh my gosh, look at this. I was like, Jesus, put some chub on. But he has a jumper underneath. <laughs> I was like, whoa. It's like gained a few. Look how thick that was. All right, we've got to get Bella's ceiling back on. So I'm going to connect another wire up here. Like so. And then that's our up and that's our down. Or vice versa, whichever way. We've epoxied all of our holes. All right, Bella, let's keep going. I'm just throwing a couple of new cables in here. I'm gonna cover it back up so Bella's got a bedroom again. 
And I can play around in here and uh, join these wires up somewhere else. Bed is pulled apart. Bella's room is so great. The only thing we want to replace is this gross material on the side of the walls. Yeah. The only non-great thing about it is everyone's always coming in here, like lifting up the bed to get something going in the anchor locker, lifting the roof off. It's like, jeez. It's been a while since that's happened, actually. Yeah. Where's that solenoid belly? All right, he's putting in the solenoid. Just want to see where I'm going to put it first. Thanks to Ron, uh, Ronnie Ross. That was a uh, Amazon purchase. Thank you very, very, very much. We'll now be able to put the anchor down using a button rather than the steel pipe, whatever that thing was before, which the dodgy thing. Lee didn't trust anyone else to do, so it'll be a lot handier to have the foot pedal. I'm going to put this in my drill bit and I'm, I'm just going to slowly spin it or fastly spin it and hold onto it. And I'm, I've got a hole and I want to remove a little bit of the core. So I've actually got like a epoxy thickened ring for compression when I tighten up the new fitting. We had a little bit of rod around the old fitting, fill it with epoxy and re-drill it. And job done. That's how it should be done from the beginning, guys. These bloody boat builders, I tell ya. Make havoc for us later on in life. going to jump in the water today which is really not great because the water's not beautifully clear and it's really cold so I have a wetsuit on it's not a very thick one but it'll do the job um, when I clean the bottom of the boat I've learned some things over the years and one of the most important things is to wear gloves I cut my finger about eight months ago when I was cleaning the prop and I split on my knuckle and it's still doesn't bend properly and I still have like pain in the top of there so I don't know if there's something in it or it's all like kind of swollen still that was eight months ago from cleaning the bottom of the boat so I wear gloves now <laughs> it's taken me six years to wear gloves but I now clean the bottom of the boat wearing gloves another thing another tip it is cold here so I don't mind doing it here I usually I actually probably this is the first time I'm ever gonna wear it cleaning the bottom of the boat but when you clean the bottom of the boat you get all little creepy crawlies all over you and the little gross things everywhere and I'm going to wear a hood today pretty much the prop and clean up all of around the rudder because there's quite a lot of growth on there about 13 degrees Celsius and uh, that's cold the the first struggle is gonna be this getting this thing on my head <laughs> so I only will protect my hair from the grubs and the bits of barnacle and being gross. Um, it's also going to protect my ears, so it's going to stop any little things floating, hopefully, floating into my ears. Usually I do wear earplugs. Put my gloves on. Bella's going to jump in with me, but she's not wearing a wetsuit, so I don't think she's going to last very long. What do you reckon, guys? I've probably given her five minutes. <laughs> We don't have a hooker, we don't have scuba tanks, so we are free diving it today, which means I'm going to have to hold my breath and clean all the barnacles off the bottom, off the prop, so we can take this old girl for a run. Because it's a beautiful day today, and I think the only thing stopping us is cleaning the bum and Lee hooking up the deck wash. So we've got two jobs to do. I'm going to knock one of those out of the ballpark right now, and the other one is up to the captain. All right, let's go and scrub the bottom.
beautiful day on San Diego and everybody's out sailing apart from us because we're doing boat work. One of the little tasks I'm doing today, as you all know, we had water in our fuel and my suspicion was after we first refilled the boat after such a long time, it was very corroded, the seat of the O-ring inside the fuel cap. Where were we before we had a flat battery? Um, yes, that's right, I was talking about the old fuel lid, it's aluminum. Alley as we say in Oz, she was an alley one with a stainless steel fitting, two dissimilar metals and an o-ring in between. Didn't quite work out for this, probably worked alright for a fair few years but we suspect it was leaking water. So we're going to throw that one in the bin, we've got a new one. Um, we don't have any rot here but we do have the core exposed. We don't have any rod, or it looks a bit hacked at the moment because I've been in here with the tool, but it was just the cores exposed. So I'm just taking a 10 mil back and I'm gonna use thickened epoxy and I'm gonna fill that in. And then I'll also be tapping my screws into the thickened epoxy. So if the sealant fails, and all sealant will fail at some stage, if you have an epoxy core, it's fine. If you don't, water's gonna get in. So we don't want any water ingress. All right, so yeah, there's just little things. We're not doing anything major, but it's just all preventative stuff. Like I know we're gonna, especially if we go north against the grain, we're gonna have a lot of water over the deck. And uh, I'm just trying to make sure as many fittings are sealed up nicely um, before we start getting green water over the deck. Bit of preventative maintenance, guys. And still a shit ton of jobs to do, but we'll get there. We are going to wrap them up. We're just going to finish off this one in the deck wash and we are going to go for a run and yeah. be one of these boats out in the harbour. Yeah. It's a bit busy for us today anyway. We don't yeah, want we'll, to. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it during the week. Anyway, I'm going to get back to it. So here's my little tool. Um, all I've got is an Allen key and I've just put an edge on it. And you operate this at high speed and just very slowly go away at it. We're not going to get water into our core and cause a bigger problem. It'll just be a matter of resealing the fitting and away you go again. My eyes, that's how all boats should be. It should be no core exposed. That yeah, looks pretty good, I think. It's like toothpaste. Bella is a professional epoxy mixer. She gets it right every single time. Don't spill it though, Bill. Oh my gosh, mate, this isn't my first time. <laughs> it's not a first rodeo, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, put it in the hole. I want to eat it, it looks... It's delicious. Oh, that's a beautiful mix, I must say. Probably the slightest bit past toothpaste, so it's not going to sag. So I'm just filling in. It really depends whose toothpaste, like. <laughs> you can see it coming out the holes that were originally there. Done a good job. This was an existing deck fitting that yeah. Lee just took out so that in case there was any rot or it was leaking, he's just... Filled all the in. inside with epoxy. Here they are all installed and our amazing captain also wired up our deck wash so we have a working deck wash. Make it pass, so we don't really know what we're doing, but Bella is having a crack and she's doing a really great job. But we are getting to a point where we think we need to start cooking it. This little attachment, oh, thank you, Ron. It's brilliant, and uh, thanks, Brent and Tara, for this KitchenAid. It's the first time we've used it, and look at this pasta. <laughs> We got pasta everywhere. We just we need to set up better for for hanging it. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're going to open this little package here. Inside we have a little bulb. What do we want this for? Well, I'll show you. Here, of a night, 
We turn the gas off, but oops, Bella's cooking. Sorry, Bella. Let's <laughs> turn it off. There's no bulb. That should glow. So, if if I've played my cards right, guys, I should be able to unscrew this. And hopefully, that this little bulb. It's Sorry, Bella. Oil. Did I <laughs> might have turned the gas off on you, possum? I've got to be careful. So I'm gonna drop this down the sink. sink. I put the stranger in. Okay, so all mix it up. We go like that. Oh, is there two? This is our. No, there's only one. That's the old one, Belly. That goes in there, and that should be our new little bowl. So we should have some light once we put that in. Is it going to be a success or not? I will screw that in. Oh, yeah! Ah, yeah! Look at that. Now we know if the gas is on or off. No one's going to leave the gas on now. So lights off before bed, and that's the gas. Worse well, is safe. Is it safe? Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Safety first, guys.